Okay. There's something in there, right, Tom? <laughs> There's something in there, right? Thanks, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Tom said move on. <laughs> I don't know if I come on. We're in Quebec to test a bunch of the newest short travel bikes, most of which are relatively expensive. But we also wanted to include a more realistic option and an aluminum bike. RSD is a Canadian brand, and this is their aluminum Wildcat that sells for $3,999 American as you see it, which is less money than what some of these other frames will cost you. But the Wildcat has a couple of interesting features to point out, including adjustable dropouts that let you run either a 29 inch or 27.5 inch rear wheel and DVO suspension on both ends. Now the Wildcat is a very different bike to the others, of course, and it's more in line with the Evil's intentions than anything else. So it'll be interesting to see what we make of it during testing. Speaking of that, let's find out how it performed. All right, it's time to talk about how the Big Cat performs on the trail. Now this bike is kind of an outlier compared to some of our others. It's an aluminum frame, it weighs, I mean, it's 10 pounds more than some of our much more expensive bikes here. So what does that mean on the trail? How does that thing climb compared to the lighter bikes, Matt? Well, it's actually substantially longer as well. Yeah. So that does make it a little more planted. Uh, it doesn't wheelie out as quick as the other bikes on some of the steeper terrain. And there's actually quite a bit of traction going on too. What about the position? When I rode that bike around, I did notice like, of course you're a little more upright, um, how does that affect the technical climbing? Yeah, you're right. It feels more like a regular short travel trail bike and it definitely helps when things get steep. You feel like you're placed equally between both wheels. Yep. So despite it being heavy, it's actually a pretty good climber. Yeah, that's what I found too. Tons of traction. Mm -hmm. Sarah, you know where I didn't like the Wildcat Wait, when yeah. I was doing the efficiency test? <laughs> <laughs> it felt like I had to put out a lot more work to get that thing up there. So yeah. when you're riding this bike, how does it pedal and, and how does that feel on the trail? Yeah, so I'd say compared to like some of those cross country bikes that we have, it definitely feels more kind of on the trail side of things where it's not like sprightly and you know, like lively when you're pushing on the pedals. It's kind of just like, it's, it's there for the long run. You know, it's gonna get you there, but it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna go for a KOM or a QOM. You're not like excited about the climbing part. It's more aiming the bike towards the downhill. Yeah, the Wildcat definitely takes a different approach. And it, to me, it feels much more like a trail bike. Like when I got on those lighter bikes with the much lower front end, I just like, I felt like I wanted to pedal hard and go. But when I was on the RSD, it's more upright, it's more relaxed. And that's, I mean, definitely it suits that type of rider, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to win any climbing competitions, you know, but I don't think that's what the bike is intended to do. And it, it is interesting though, that it has 125 millimeters of rear travel, but it's so different from some of the other bikes that have yeah. similar rear travel. And it's just, it's not kind of aiming to go uphill as fast as possible. Yeah, and one thing that I will mention, this bike pedals really well. Like, forget about the weight, forget about all the steel bolts holding this thing together. <laughs> this bike just plain pedals well, doesn't it, Matt? It does, yeah, and that DVO shock perform really well. It has a three position climb switch. Yeah. So yeah, if you're looking to get like up a steep road, you can lock it out totally, or you can run it in the trail mode and then open it up for downhills. Yeah. All right, we're at the top of the mountain on the Wildcat mat. When I was descending on this bike, I mean, it is so much easier to go faster on this thing compared to some of the should we say more cross country focused bikes that we have here, right? Yeah, feels like you're, you know, not standing on your tippy toes here. You're like planted in between both wheels very equally. It's got a little bit more stack, like the handlebars are up higher. Yeah. You don't feel quite as vulnerable leaning over the front on the steeper downhills. Yeah, I felt like I could attack the trail way more on that bike than on the other ones. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question though. The Evil and the Wildcat, they're kind of made for the same thing. Now one's aluminum, one is carbon, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? But they're made for the same thing. How would you compare those two on the descents? 
Yeah, I mean, they both had great suspension. Like they, they both worked really well over all the undulating terrain and roots and rocks, but I would say the biggest difference would be the geometry. The RSD is quite a bit longer. It's also the slackest bike here at 65 degrees for the head tube angle. Yeah. And that just made the bike feel a little bit longer, which was really good on those downhills once you get up to speed. <clears throat> yeah, there's some chunky stuff up there. And Sarah, I imagine you echo Matt's thoughts, like when it gets rough and fast, this, the RSD by far. This right? is the bike that I felt the most confident descending on. I would say just like, it was more stable. You felt like you kind of just like, charge through things a little bit more. You didn't have to worry quite as much about picking what line you were gonna go on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The other thing we should talk about, that DVO suspension. Again, we have one bike at the field test with DVO suspension, just like we did in Tucson. Now, we really like that Fazari with the DVO stuff on it. What do you think of the RSD with the DVO stuff? Yeah, I was pretty equally impressed, I would say. We don't get to spend a lot of time on that stuff, so it's kind of interesting when a new suspension brand shows up on our test bikes. Would say that the fork maybe felt like it could have used a little bit better bleed, like there was a little bit of a knock in between the rebound and compression. But the rear shock as well was also really supple. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it had that three position switch as well as a rebound dial to adjust things. And in terms of suspension action of the bike, it's definitely a little bit more forgiving and maybe almost a little bit too linear in the middle. Like when you're pedaling across flat, Rudy stuff, it does maybe want to sink a little bit further into the travel. Mm -hmm. How would you fix that, Matt? What would you change? That might be a little bit tricky, but I would just keep increasing the air pressure mm -hmm. until the small bump performance kind of went away. Yeah. And then you're kind of finding that middle ground where yeah. it works best for everything. What about when we get on a trail that's traversing more than going straight down? How does the, how does the Wildcat feel then? Yeah, so we had quite a lot of that kind of terrain where it's, you know, it's not straight up and then straight down here is kind of undulating Bit terrain. Of work. Bit yeah, of work. totally. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, kind of like on the climbing, when you're kind of going into a downhill, into an uphill, the Wildcat doesn't quite have that kind of oomph, you know, that like desire to kind of pedal up, but yeah. it is quite comfortable. So when there is kind of those loose sections or like, you know, gnarly little rooted root balls, it kind of just absorbs them so you don't feel like, you know, the saddle's hitting you hard or anything. It's just yeah. kind of, you can just yeah. crawl up them. That's what I thought too. It was a bit of a, on this bike, on the Wildcat, it was a bit of a brain off bike and those like awkward <laughs> rock sections. I could just be like, I'm gonna go that direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, whether it was, you know, downhill or kind of up and down, yeah. you didn't have to think about as much and kind of those slippery rocks, we had a lot of those or like off camber rooty sections, you didn't have to kind of worry that the bike was going to slip out as much. It just kind of held its yep. line really well. Yeah. Let's move on to time to testing. And Sarah, if I had to guess, I'm predicting that the Wildcat had the slowest climbing time. You're mm. right. <laughs> How did you guess? Who yeah. <laughs> but it did have, it tied for the fastest descending time. So. Yes. Win some, lose some. Overall loop, though, that climb did count for more, so it was actually the slowest on the overall loop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's and, just. You know, the time testing thing, like, we talked a bit about how the Wildcat climbs, and I think its big climbing strength is it pedals pretty well for what it is, but also it gives you a ton of traction. So, like, take these times with a grain of salt, you know? Like, this bike is a good climber, it just, it's also, you know, it's less expensive and it weighs more, so it goes up slower. It's going up against some pretty, you know, dedicated climbers, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna talk about models next. How many are there and how much do they cost? Well, there are two complete bikes and a frame only. The frame goes for 1800 US, and then we had the Dior spec, which was 4000. And then for 3250, you can get a slightly lower spec bike with the SX from SRAM. Moving on, we're gonna talk about components that came on our bike, our test bike. We're also gonna talk about some frame details. Let's start with the good stuff first. Matt, those SLX brakes. I, I was surprised as well. This is the second bike around that I've tried with the SLX brakes mm -hmm. and I noticed that they were a lot more consistent than the XT or XTR. I don't know what's going on there, but two for two, these are great. And it was also another one of the bikes that had a 200 mil rotor, which suited you know, the character of this RSD. 
Sarah, what about the rest of the spec? Is there anything that stood out to you? Good, bad? I mean, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, that's what I would say. It was just, it felt like a really well-chosen spec and it's hard to meet those price points, like 4,000 or 3,249 US dollars. Like that's not a lot. You don't get to Especially choose. these days, right? Yeah, you don't get yeah. to choose the highest end components. And I think that RSD did a really good job of just choosing a solid spec for the yeah, intended use. For sure. And it is neat to see a different suspension company. You know, like we always see RockShox Fox. Like we always know the story. So it's cool to ride something else. Totally. I do have one thing to complain about, the cable routing on this bike. <laughs> you know, the, the entry ports behind the head tube are so far back that it makes these huge loops of cable. Yeah. And then the external rear brake line, it comes out by the bottom bracket shell and it runs along the chain stays and it like rubs on the bottom bracket cup when you're pedaling and there's like all these zip ties everywhere yeah. and like... <laughs> Yeah, I had that happen actually. So when I was pedaling, I was like, what's that noise? And it turned out it was like the dropper cable that was like right in my front yeah. chain ring. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So I, you know, stopped and moved yeah. it up into the frame. But yeah, definitely not ideal cable routing. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing too, it is really neat that RSD makes this bike compatible with two wheel sizes. So you can do the mullet thing. But man, Matt, there's a lot of heavy steel bolts on this bike, eh? Yeah, it's not the most polished looking bike, yeah. but I think, you know, we're talking about price point bikes. Yeah. The geometry is good. There's got to be some compromises here and that might be one of them. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's easy for us to nitpick, but I mean, this whole bike is four grand and we really enjoyed yeah. riding it. Yeah. And I mean, how can you argue with that? Yeah. And it's also yeah. the only full suspension bike in RSD's lineup. So I can imagine that they, you know, feel compelled to do a little bit more with like one bike. So I can yeah. see where those adjustable chain stays kind of come into play there. Sarah, tell us the things that you liked. Yeah, I think overall, it's just a really good descender. Yeah. Um, it really surprised us, you know, for how capable it was for, you know, compared to the other bikes. For 125 miles of travel. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, and yeah. then just a really, you know, solid uh, spec group, well chosen for the price point. Yeah. Matt, I'm gonna go to you for the cons. What didn't you like? Well, we talked about the cable routing before. It's just not that well polished, but I mean, there has to be some compromises for a $4,000 bike and it does ride really well. Yeah. So, you know, in comparison to the bikes that are twice as expensive in the test here, yeah. this thing does do a good job, but there's just a couple small pieces that could be polished. Right, we're gonna wrap this review up by talking about who this bike is for and giving our final impressions of the RSD Wildcat. Sarah, give it to us. Yeah, so I think this bike is just a great all-rounder for somebody who doesn't wanna break the banks. Uh, great East Coast bike, so what we've been riding here in Quebec is very technical, despite what people might think about East Coast riding. And uh, yeah, the Wildcat's just a great bike for this terrain. Super solid. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Good geometry doesn't have to cost more money. Exactly. So some lighter wheels, carbon parts down the road, that would really make this a killer bike. Yeah. There you go. That is our take on RSD's new Wildcat V3. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any field test videos from our Quebec downcountry field test. We'll see you there.